Hey you guys, it's Peter. And I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Beast! Peek boo I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available summer 2023, the album, Dad! Shimmy Shimmy AF. <clears throat> Today, I would like to do a little memorial tribute medley to one of my favorite musical artists of all time, Miss Tina Turner, who has passed away today. Um, I'm absolutely devastated. She has been just a constant in my life since I was a very little kid. I can remember my mom turning on her music in the kitchen and dancing as she would cook. And um, I just, you know, everybody in my life has always loved Tina Turner and I love Tina Turner so much. And um, so I wanted to do a little dedication medley today of some of my favorite Tina Turner songs in honor of Tina Turner and her life. So, <clears throat> here we go. Left a good job in the city Working for the man every night and day Beast! You're simply the best Better than all the rest And my favorite of all time What's love got to do Got to do with it, uh-huh What's love but a second-hand emotion. Beast! So, rest in peace, dear Tina Turner. I loved you dearly. You brought me so much joy. Um, it seems like, and I don't know if this is something about getting older. You know, I'm called the old man in YouTube. Um, I don't know if this is something about getting older, but it seems like just in the last two or three years, so many of the people that I grew up with listening to, watching on TV, watching in movies have passed recently. And it's kind of like, what, is, what happened to my childhood? You know, what happened to those years that I was growing up? It's, it's kind of fading. It's kind of sad, you know, when uh, you see these people that you, were idols of yours, you know, get older and pass on and things like that. So anyway, she will be missed. She was such a fantastic talent, wasn't she? Um, okay, so today we're going to talk about Mr. James Charles and um, some shade that he or a friend of his kind of threw um, at Tati Westbrook indirectly and him kind of poking the bear of past drama that happened. But before I get into that, I just want to say something. I was recommended this movie on Netflix. So many people told me to watch this movie called Missing, um, which the main star is the younger sister of Zendaya on Euphoria. Have you guys seen this movie? Okay, apparently uh, the director came out with a movie several years ago that like won awards at Sundance and things like that and it was called Searching, which I'm gonna watch tonight. Um, this movie was one of the best movies I have seen in a, in a long, long time. It was so good. It was, I mean, so good, so good. So if you're looking for a good movie to watch, I would highly, highly recommend Missing um, on Netflix. And I also wanna say this because I've gotten a lot of comments and a lot of DMs recently about two different specific videos that people are like kind of wondering about. And the first one is people are wondering if I am going to talk about Marlena Stell going on um, Kendall Ray's podcast. And yes, I am going to talk about that. I wish Kendall Ray would invite me on her podcast to talk about my experience with her Baumeister since I've talked a lot in past videos, I still, it's so weird because I made a video, I don't even know, like three or four years ago talking about like I may have met a serial killer talking about her Baumeister, um, which he's like one of the biggest serial killers in the United States um, that to this day, like not a lot of people talk about. Um, and he's from, he was from Indianapolis. And I think that they found that he killed like 29 gay men. Um, and he was also known as the I-70 killer. And so I made a video years ago because a friend of mine, in talking to my friend Tanya Jean, she was like, uh, or my friend was like, yeah, we went there for an after party. It was me, you, and another person. Do you not remember that? And so I made a video about that. And then my friends and I, we actually went out to his old house, Fox Hollow Farms, for a paranormal investigation. I filmed the whole thing. It's called, it's called Fox Hollow Farms. It's on my vlog. I think it's like the highest viewed vlog, which is saying a lot. I think it's like the highest viewed vlog on my vlog channel. Um, and it's just my friend Melissa and my friend Aaron and I, and we went there for a paranormal investigation. Um, and But I made like three or four videos about her Baumeister. And um, so I would love 
for Miss Kendall Ray to invite me on her podcast to talk about uh, her Baumeister since nobody really talks about him online. But anyway, um, I am going to watch the podcast with Marlene Estelle. I've covered a lot to do with Marlene Estelle and Jacqueline Hill, and I want people to know. But the thing is, I want to watch it and be, like, dedicated to watching it and take some notes and things like that. Like, I don't want to just kind of, like, you know, watch it a little bit here and a little bit there. If I'm going to get in a video and I'm going to respond to it, like, I want to make sure that I know what's being said. The other thing I wanted to talk about on here was the video that I made the other day in response to Dustin Daly's video where, um, and I'm actually going to do, like, a longer video talking about preceding what video I may or may not, I, I may never come out and make this video. Um, but a lot of people are like messaging me and being like, what are you going to talk about? And are you going to talk about this? Or, I mean, and all these people are speculating and it's like, I don't, if I came out and made that video, like to this day, like I really don't know what I would say in it, you know? Um, but I just want you to know, it's probably not as exciting as you all think. Okay. Um, I don't know why so many people are so worried or so scared about what myself or he might say in a video. I, I'm not really sure what that is. I'm not sure what people have to hide. Um, I'm not sure what people are worried about or anything like that, you know? And, um, but I'm going to make a video addressing that and talking about a, a lot of the responses. Cause I've gotten a lot of responses since I made that video. You know, it's like on one side, a lot of people are like, Oh, you need to come out and tell your truth and you know and a lot of people have said well there's a difference between the truth and your truth and I think that's interesting because when I refer to talking about my truth what I'm talking about is my experience of having gone through something okay you cannot fight me on my experience my experience is my truth that's what I went through okay and I do believe that in any experience that you go through in life there's your experience there's another person's experience and then there's the truth that lies in the middle right so it's just I'm just sharing my experience and that's what I mean by saying my truth about what I went through does that mean that it's definitive fact absolutely not that's just my feelings my emotions of what I went through at a certain time how I felt about that and I know a lot of people are totally not interested in it they're like this is so long ago why does anybody care blah, blah 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 well James Charles still cares James Charles and his friends feel like this is something appropriate to poke the bear at so we're going to talk about that today so yesterday was uh, Mr. James Charles birthday he was 24 years old happy birthday James um now before I get into this video I did a little bit of research because through the years, whenever I talk about James or any of James's behaviors, um, I always get a lot of comments where people will say, you know, James has not fully developed yet. He's not like fully a developed adult. And, and a lot of people will excuse a lot of his behaviors because he's not a fully developed adult. So I wanted to go in and I wanted to look and see because I thought that they kind of considered like adolescence up till the age of 18 and then like young adulthood <clears throat> was like 18 to 25. And I knew that I thought like 25 was kind of the cutoff and then it's like adulthood, right? And that they say that the brain is pretty fully formed by the time that you're 25 and things like that. But I wasn't sure. So I wanted to go in and I wanted to check um, to just give James some grace, you know, because I mean, and I am a believer. I am a believer that you know, at some points with a lot of people, I, I, like when you talk about addiction, um, I had always been taught that when you start using, you stop develop, developing emotionally, right? So like, for example, I got sober at 22 and a half. I started using at 12. When I got sober, there were many parts of me that were still at like 12 to 14 years old. That took me many, many years to catch up with, right? And so I do believe that with a lot of these people, like kind of when they started getting obsessed with social media and they got on social media and things, like that I think that their development kind of stopped at that point now there are a lot of people out there that got on social media I mean and I think that would look at explaining a lot of when you talk about like Shane Dawson and Trisha Paytas and things like that you see a lot of this kind of delayed development where many of their behaviors of the past or the present seem to be of somebody of a much you know younger age because I think that what happened was to some degree, getting on social media was kind of addicting to them. And so it was a completely different world, all of their own, where they were just like by themselves, filming videos, whatever, only other really interacting with other YouTubers and things like that back in the day. And so there was kind of like a delayed development. And I do believe that, right? There's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that they can't catch up later or that things aren't going to, you know, grow down the road. But I think when you're kind of in an isolated environment, you're only filming videos and your goal is just to film videos and you're kind of by yourself a lot and whatever, I think that it kind of like caters to that kind of mentality. So a lot of people have used this excuse for excusing away James Charles' behaviors and saying, well, he's still basically an adolescent and he doesn't know. So I wanted to go in here and I wanted to look and see 
And so I just put, at what age does adult development uh, stop? And uh, MIT, which I think is a pretty substantial uh, research uh, institution, said, across theories and research frameworks, a sequence of developmental shifts emerges, which can be organized into three overall categories. Adolescence, generally defined as puberty through age 18. Young adulthood, generally defined as 18 to 22 or 18 to 25. And later adulthood, generally defined as mid-20s and older, okay? So looking at that, what we would find is that James Charles, by development, as defined by MIT, okay, is in um, young adulthood, okay, which I think we know that. He's actually in his final year of young adulthood before he enters adulthood, right? And then I wanted to see what people are saying, what developmental stu or research studies are saying about when the brain stops developing. And um, this is from the University of Rochester. And it says the rational part of a teen's brain isn't fully developed and won't be until age 25 or so. In fact, recent research has found that adult and teen brains work differently. Adults sync with the, front, uh, the prefrontal cortex, the brain's rational part, and it goes on and it talks about that, okay? And I'm not saying that that excuses James's behaviors because I think that there are, and we know this, right? That there are many, 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 hundreds of thousands, if not millions, okay, of youngsters out there that are much younger than James Charles that know that you don't stick your hand in the cookie jar, okay? Who stole the cookie from the cookie jar? James stole the cookie. No, not me. Um, and so, like, I think there are a lot of us, you know? It's like, I can remember uh, hearing somebody tell their story years ago, and basically they were talking about, like, all the lessons that we learned, most of us. You know, and it seems to me that James came from a pretty good family. Um, and I'm sure, you know, like, we've seen his parents. He's put his parents in videos and things like that, that they parented him well. You know, we know that he got a good education when he was growing up and things like that. Um, I remember hearing this person speak and tell their story, and one of the things that they said was that basically everything that we ever needed to know, we learned before we got on the bus for first grade, you know? And I think it's kind of an interesting concept, because I do believe that to some degree, that most of us know the difference between right and wrong. And I do believe that James Charles knows the difference between right and wrong. I think that the difference is, is that James Charles doesn't care, okay? So let's talk about what happened at 12 minutes and 31 seconds. James Charles posted many, many pictures. Whatever happened to him and the D'Amelios? Does anybody know? Him and the D'Amelios, they don't hang out no more, girl. They don't care about you no more, girl. Are you, are you a detriment to their reputation? Um, I think, first of all, I think the D'Amelios are fine. They seem like very nice girls. Bore a snake. They would bore a snake. I tried to watch that reality show of theirs. I was so bored. I was like, oh my God. I don't know. Please give me X on the beach all day long because I can't. These D'Amelio sisters are so boring. But anyway, but they seem very, very nice. Okay, very nice. Um, I think that their most famous thing right now is that they're constantly breaking up with people. I saw it on Instagram the other day. The, the Hollywood something, uh, Dixie, is that her name? <laughs> Dixie's, anyway, D Charlie's sister, Dixie. She uh, broke up with somebody or he broke up with her and now he's with somebody else that looks just like her or something like that. They all just kind of like those TikTok people, they all just kind of date each other, don't they? It's so bizarre, it's so bizarre. But anyway, how bizarre, how bizarre. Um, oh, should I pop my collar like I'm in, back in high school again? Oh, look at that, that looks kind of chic, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't come for my, don't come for my, uh, my glamour. Um, it's called fashion, Brenda. Okay, so anyway, but what was interesting to me about James Charles posting all of these birthday wishes that people had sent him um, was that I didn't really know <laughs> most of these people that he had like gone back and they, they had wished him all his birthday wishes and whatever. I didn't know most of these people, okay? But he did include this picture of his birthday cake that um, this person sent to him this year. Hold on a second. Here, I'm going to put it up right here. And um, the picture, and it's the birthday cake, and he tagged the person that apparently sent him the cake, and um, the person is Alexis Oakley, and he says on here, hold on a sec, the birthday cake says, if you can't read it, it says, and you did it at my birthday dinner, okay? Now, I was sent this this morning. This collar looks kind of stupid. What, what were we thinking back in the day? Well, hell, some of us wore two and three polo shirts and popped all three collars out of them. That was when we thought we were preppy. <laughs> Do you guys remember that? What was that movie, Valley Girl? Oh my God, people still to this day, they're like, why do you talk like a 16-year-old Valley Girl? Because I watched that movie, a Valley Girl with Nicolas Cage, one too many times. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. But anyway, um, I'm like, so many people said this to me this morning, and I'm like, 
<laughs> okay, James, this is not funny. This is not funny at all. And the fact that you think it's funny and the fact that your friends think it's funny is very telling about your sense of humor, okay? Now, I have to tell you, I'm very apprehensive to do this because every time I post a TikTok in my video, this is why I don't post TikToks and I don't post video clips in my videos like all the other channels out there that are more highly edited than me. The reason I don't is because every time I do, I get copyright striked on my channel, okay? Which doesn't hurt my channel, but what it means is they like take all the money from the video and they claim it and then it's theirs for life or whatever, right? It usually doesn't happen until two or three months down the road, but I'm just like, whatever, at that point, I just let them have it, I don't fight it. But that's why I don't typically include TikToks. But I wanted to find the clip of Tati talking about this, and I didn't want to clip it straight off the video. So I went into TikTok, and I looked it up. Now, I have to tell you, the part where she's talking about the birthday dinner in her uh, original video, which was called By Sisters, um, somebody has clipped it and made an original sound off of it on TikTok. There are like 467 people that have gone in and made TikToks. I sat there, and I was like watching just one after another. And literally, I mean... <laughs> When Tati says sucking cock and balls, okay, or dick and cock or whatever she says, I don't know what oh my god! Oh my god! It's like reading Nikocado Avocado tweets. But I'm gonna play it for you in just a second so you'll hear it yourself, right? But these people, like all of them, like recreate what she's saying. This one gal, she's telling it to her grandma and her grandma's sitting across the table for her. They were, I mean, these are so funny, these TikToks. And they're all like, it's just the sound of Tati talking about this and they're like imitating it. If you want to spend a good afternoon, go in there and look up Tati and James Charles and find this original. I'll link the original one um, and I'll link their name below. And cause I'm gonna show it to you. Well, I'll just show, here, here you go, right now. It was just like, no big deal. Like sucking dick and cock. Like I'm just like, oh my God, time and place. And you did it at my birthday dinner and I made excuses for you then. You were talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter and when I said, James, he's straight, your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. So freaking gross and you said that in front of my family, in front of my childhood friends. So there you go. Tati will forever go down in infamy for saying sucking dick and cock. Well, girl! I guess there are worse things, you know? I have to tell you, um, I was talking to a friend of mine today and I was like, you know, it'll be interesting because I feel like 2023 is kind of heating up a little bit and it is almost the four year anniversary of Bi Sisters. I think Bi Sisters video came out on like May 5th, four years ago. So it is interesting to me, okay, that four years later, James Charles comes out with this birthday cake that apparently this, this gal bought for him and she thought it was real funny and all this kind of stuff, right? Which tells you that behind the scenes, James Charles' friends, they all think this is real funny, that they've laughed about this, you know? Um, when James came out in a video and addressed the victims and took responsibility and said that the reason why he did it was because he was desperate, okay? And has since then been caught in multiple alleged scandals where he has been doing the same thing, okay? If not worse. And his friends seem to think that this is okay. His friends seem to think that this is funny, haha. -ha. In fact, a lot of his influencer friends go to his birthday parties and they condone this behavior and whatever, you know? And um, I, I really, to be honest with you, like I don't understand it, you know? Um, I've had through the years a lot of comments that I've gotten where people say, well, like if James was your friend, are you saying that you wouldn't be friends with him anymore? Um... Yeah, I am saying that. Um, I don't know that I could continue to be friends with James Charles, who took responsibility, took the video down, and then made fun of it. I mean, I, I think, like, my friends and I have very honest relationships and honest conversations with each other. I think that there would have to be a conversation that occurred where I would say, where do you find humor in this? Like, where do you think that this is funny, um, that you're poking fun at, being accused of predatorial behavior. Like, I, I don't really understand that. Like, if that were the case, like, you would think that you would be scared of that. And you know what's interesting to me is, and thinking back on this, is that when James came out with his video, after he had taken six months off running scared from the internet, and he said that he was gonna work on himself, which basically working on himself, and I've said this in many videos, because I, I followed and watched closely what was going on at that time, was that he went to Camp Coachella with his, his friends, and they rented an Airbnb and hung out and partied for the whole weekend, and he took TikToks of himself at the pool with his friends and things like that. Um, 
you know, he's never talked about going to therapy. He's never talked about really working on himself or what this means. What he realized was that he was desperate and that's why he did it, okay? But he's continued to engage in this behavior. He's continued to do this over and over and over again. In fact, just last year, I covered where James Charles was in an Instagram story. And, and this is the thing to me, I just want to say, like, and you know I cross-reference pop culture and things like that. My husband and I, we love the Housewives, okay? I, my favorite franchise is the Rural Housewives of Atlanta. I love it. Although I, wa I wish I watched New Jersey because that reunion looks like it's going to be on fire, okay? <laughs> but I don't watch New Jersey, but I might watch the reunion just to see because I, I, I think it looks like it's going to be on fire. But anyway, so I was watching Atlanta this week. Now, I know some of you aren't going to like when I say this, but I'm a huge Marlo Hampton fan, okay? And maybe it's because Marlo Hampton has kind of a sordid past and so do I. And so I think like, I'm a believer in pulling yourself up and coming out of that kind of stuff, you know, and gaining strength and becoming a better person. God love her. I just don't think she's going to do it this season. Okay. I think Marlo's going to show her ASS and she's going to get lippy again. I was hoping for her. You know, she was a good Monty. I was like, real, I, I like Marlo. But anyway, we watched the episode last week. And in the episode, she kind of goes off on Drew because of a situation that happens with Candy, okay? And it's kind of a confusing situation. But then she was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, and he asked her about the situation. And she said, in not so many words, she basically said one of the things that she's tired of is that she and everybody else have to address their issues, whereas Candy dictates what she will and won't talk about, right? And that she's kind of protected when it comes to being on The Real Housewives because everybody loves Candy. I love Candy, you know, whatever. There's not really a lot of them out there that I don't like. I don't necessarily like the Friends this season, like that Courtney gal. I don't really love her so much. And, I, you know, it's just whatever. Drew's not my favorite, but it's just, you know... So, I mean, we're, she's gonna, it's gonna be real sad because, you know, she's going through a divorce and all that kind of stuff, so that's gonna be on the season, but anyway, I, I digress. But I thought that that was interesting. I thought that that was interesting that that was Marlo's take, that Marlo was like, Candy never has to talk about anything, and everybody else has to address her issues, and Candy kind of like, with just a look, will say, don't ask me about this, or don't talk, I don't want to talk about this, right? And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about the fact that you know, when you look at the beauty influencer community, and I was just talking to a friend about this today, and he brought it up, and I said, oh, I was going to say the same thing in my video. Um, it was Dustin Daly. And I said, um, we were talking about, you know, that, like, if Jeffree Star came out with, like, a birthday cake, and it was alleging something of his past, making fun of it, like, let's just say racist remarks or whatever, okay? Can you even just for one second imagine how, and I'm not excusing Jeffree Star's behavior, okay? I'm just using it as an example. Can you imagine how that would go over on the internet or Shane Dawson for his past behaviors or Trisha Paytas for her past behaviors or any of them, take any of them, okay? But for some reason, Manny, or for some reason, take Manny, take Laura, take any of them, right? Um, which, you know, they're friends with James. But for some reason, James is able to do this stuff and people think it's funny. Like, his friends around him all kind of condone this and enable this behavior, and they think it's funny. Like, it's not funny, okay? You are accused of very, very serious stuff that almost ruined your career. And in all honesty, if what I believe, allegedly, was that legal didn't step in, because I think James had stuff over these people, I think that his career would have been ruined, you know? I think his career isn't doing great these days. So it's interesting to me that he continues to get away with this stuff. Now, I do have my own theory as to why that is, is that I think that what happened was with the Bi Sisters video going forward over the next two years, I think there were so many allegations. And I think this is where kind of people started to like not really believe the allegations. And James Charles was the first one to lead that pack. You know, if somebody came out and like, and this is the thing, right? Is like, let's say if there were five allegations and one of them was true, okay? Well, four of them that are making it up to just get clout off of James Charles' name and say he was dipping into my DMs. Well, what you're doing is you're taking away the power of the truth, okay, for the one victim that actually that did happen to. So James Charles monopolized on that or monetized on that and said, I don't even know the word I'm looking for, but what he said was these people are trying to ruin me and he would use those examples of the people that were making up the stories, okay, to take away the truth from the people that were not 
making up the stories. And that's what he did. And then what happened over time was there was such a saturation of all of these stories coming out because James Charles never stopped, number one. And number two, there were a lot of people that were alleging things, true or not, we don't know, right? And I think people at that point just were kind of like not shocked by anything that James Charles did. So James Charles can come out with a, a birthday cake referencing Tati's by sister video that says, and you did it at my birthday dinner and nobody cares because people aren't surprised by James Charles because the reality is, and this is where I do not believe in cancel culture. Okay. I think that, and I, I don't blame it on anybody because I think these people are responsible for the, their own behaviors. You know, if that were really the case, if James Charles was really canceled over what happened, he wouldn't be getting in no Instagram story holding up a cake that referenced what ruined him to begin with. He'd be scared to death to talk about that. He'd be scared to death to make a joke about it. He's not scared. He thinks it's funny. He showed an Instagram story where he's blowing out candles on the same cake and they're all sitting around laughing and, and it, it's, it's ridiculous to me, you know? And what I was gonna say earlier was he came out in an Instagram story less than a year ago where he's like, I sometimes wonder if I wasn't the ultimate famous Jeff, James, I almost said Jeffree Star, James Charles of the world. Who'd care? If I wasn't the famous celebrity James Charles of the world and I was just a regular person, what would I be doing, you know, hanging out with my friends and where would I be today and who would my friends be? Well, girl, probably what you would be doing if you hadn't been using that ring light, okay, to get yourself on the Ellen show years ago and try to fake your way into fame. If you hadn't done all that years ago, what you would be doing right now is probably either working a real job after you had graduated from college if you had gone or two, you'd be working two jobs to pay for all your makeup up, okay, so that you could sit at home and watch all these fools do makeup, uh, get ready with me, and copy them online. Okay, it's probably what you would be doing because most people your age are working one, if not two, jobs to pay for their apartment, to pay for going out with their friends on the weekends, to pay to take little trips here and there, okay, or buy their first home and things like that. Most people have not been gifted the life that you have been gifted. Be grateful for that, okay? And you owe that to your audience that bought that one palette that was the only palette that you ever needed and now you're coming out with your own makeup line. Do people need that? Because you came out with a palette and you said this is the only palette that you'll ever need. Now you're coming out with this makeup, okay? That quite frankly, the pictures that I've seen of this new makeup that he's coming out with, which trust I will be covering, looks like somebody put a bunch of paint, oil paints in their mouth and spit it all over his face. That's what it looks like to me, okay? I don't think it's attractive. I think it's a cool concept that he's got it like in these like oil paint containers and whatever, but like that's nothing new. Other makeup companies have done that in the past. It's a gimmick is what it is. So your makeup is a gimmick and everything you've ever done with your career is a gimmick. Okay, except for getting caught for these scandals, which there have been many through the years, many, many, many scandals that James Charles has gotten in through the years that he continues to take no responsibility for and thinks is funny. Okay, and that's the thing. That's the issue that I have with it is that most of his friends have not distanced themselves from him, you know, and I can remember here, y'all want to know a truth? I'll tell you a truth. I can remember talking to Manny on the phone, okay? And I said to Manny something about this. I said, I really do not understand because y'all think that I don't confront these people. I confront these people. Trust, okay? And I said, I do not understand how you can sit there, all right, and condone James' behavior and be okay with it. And in all honesty, Manny has done, jokingly, very similar things, like having Harry Jowsey kiss him on the cheek and be like, oh my God, whatever, you know? And listen, okay? I'm not going to say and act there like as a, a gay man that I've never had a celebrity crush or a crush on another straight guy or thought a straight guy was good looking or whatever. But there's a line you don't cross, okay? There's a line you do not cross. And I think perpetuating that idea or that fantasy is like, we don't need that in 2023, okay? We just do not need that, you know? And, and I really don't understand that. And I can remember saying to Manny, I don't understand why you don't say anything to him. Like, I don't understand why you continue to enable this behavior and you take pictures with him and you go to his parties and you act like this is all okay. And he said to me, he said, if you knew James behind the scenes, which I had talked to James behind the scenes many times. I mean, he had told me he didn't have PR people. He didn't know what he was doing. He didn't know how to handle these situations. And he was like very, very worried about this. That was before all the allegations came out that I talked to him. But... You know, and, I, and he said, if you knew James behind the scenes, you would know that James is really not like that. And I was like, 
well, there's evidence, Manny. There's factual evidence that's come out. And he's like, yeah, but like James isn't really like that. Well, Tati came out and said he was. She said he was at a dinner party at a restaurant hitting on a straight waiter, talking about because he was a celebrity, so he thought he could get away with that, which is later validates other behaviors that he showed, talking about <clears throat> in front of her family that he was sucking dick and cock, okay? I'm telling you right now, in my family, my Aunt Kathy, I can tell you right now, who was a very classy chick, if she had heard at that dinner table, James Charles sitting there talking about sucking dick and cock, She'd say, I'm sorry, but I'm paying for this dinner, and you can get your ass up and you can go somewhere else, okay? You don't act like you're 22. You don't act like you're 20. You don't act like you're 18. You act like you're 12 years old with that mouth, and you can go away from this table until you can talk appropriately to be sitting at this table, okay? Now, I don't think, you know, I, I go back and forth with what Toddy's involvement is and all this kind of stuff. You know, I made this video, and I was very defensive of Toddy, and I said, I think Toddy's a nice guy, blah, 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 whatever she's got in over her head, which I still believe, okay? Kind of what I feel today is, in all honesty, after really thinking about it the last couple weeks, is that Toddy's kind of simple, is what I really think, in all truth, okay? I don't think she really thinks this stuff out that deep. I think Toddy was being manipulated at first by Shane and Jeffrey, but she already had the thought in her head. And a lot of people in my video when I talked about that said, well, it was Tati that put the video out. And you're absolutely 100% right. Tati put the video out, Tati needs to own it. It was her decision. Whether people were in her ear or not, it was Tati's decision 100% to put that video out. She needs to own it. I agree with that, okay? That doesn't mean that she wasn't, like had people in her ear that were manipulating her or whatever. After the fact, I think James Charles was manipulating her. And I think she just didn't know what to do with the situation. She's never really been a drama game player and all this kind of stuff. You know, and I'm kind of surprised that Tati came out recently and said, in reference to Jeffree Star on a podcast, talking about how Tati and James ruined the beauty community. I'm kind of surprised that Tati even said, well, apparently I ruined the beauty community. If Tati called me up and said, what do you think? I'd say, girl, I think you need to keep your mouth shut, okay? Yes, it was a funny comment. I think it was kind of you like, you know, poking the bear a little bit. But girl, have you not learned to stay out of drama? Like you have repaired your career. You're doing what you love to do. You're making good money. You're putting out videos. Things are getting back to normal. Girl, stay out of the drama, okay? I hope she doesn't come out and say something about James Charles and this cake. And I don't think she will. But Jeffree Star might. Jeffree Star might come out and say something about this. But I have to really truly believe because of how it ended, and we still don't have answers to this day, I have to believe that legal got, and people want to say it was YouTube. I don't think YouTube cares that deeply about it. I really don't. No offense, YouTube. But I think legal got involved on somebody, and I don't think it was Jeffrey, and I don't think it was Tati. I think it was James Charles' legal team. He was like, I'm putting an end to this, and I think he had something over them. I don't know what it was, and he said, y'all are either going to come out with videos, and you're going to shut your mouths and take ownership over it, or I'm going to come out with an expose. Because I don't think he had anything to lose at that point. He knew that, right? Tati, she had a lot to lose. Jeffrey had a lot to lose. James Charles had lost everything. You got to remember that. You got to remember where the players were at at that time. James Charles didn't have anything to lose. He had already lost 3 million subscribers. So he was going to come out and he was going to be able to leave his video up. They were going to take their videos down and Jeffree Star and Tati were going to come out and they were going to say, well, I, I apologize for all this and I shouldn't have done that. Jeffree Star threatened to come out with facts, receipts, and talk and text messages and share the truth. Never did that. To this day has never done that. Why? For the audience. Girl, the audience was craving the truth. The audience wanted to really know what was going on behind the scenes. The audience wanted to really know what really went down. The audience wanted to know why Nathan wouldn't let James Charles over to his house or what Jeffrey and James falling out was really about. People wanted to know that. So don't give me this crap about they were mending fences, which they never have mended fences since. You know, Tati came out and said that her and James Charles were fine. When has she ever really interacted with James Charles since she said that? That was all just for show, okay? That was all just let's be nicey-nicey for show because legal's involved and whatever. I have to wonder what, what that conversation was that occurred. Do I believe that there was a conversation that occurred over Zoom or the three of them sat in some conference room with attorneys and they talked it out until they decided how it was going to all go down? Absolutely, 100%. I do. I do, you know? Do I think it's interesting that four years later, this stuff is still being talked about and Jeffree Star's getting into podcasts and talking about how James and Tati ruined the beauty community? 
And he knows, what's interesting to me is that it contradicts what Jeffrey said at the time because he backed Tati. So to now come out and say that Tati ruined the beauty community with her bi sister video, which I'm not saying that she didn't contribute to that, but it was a lot of factors that ruined the beauty community. And Jeffree Star has a huge hand in that, right? So for him to come out and say that James and Tati single-handedly ruined the beauty community, it's interesting to me at this point, I'm almost kind of wondering if like whatever legal they discussed had a time limit on it. And now because, you know, he came out in the Logan Paul con uh, uh, podcast, he came out in Keemstar's basement and he now came out in this other podcast and talked about it. I'm like, I wonder if like time has ran out on whatever they were willing to or not being able to say. And now Jeffrey's like, okay, now I can say whatever I want to say. And he knows Tati and James aren't going to stir it up again because they're too afraid of losing their careers. Jeffrey's not afraid of that. I think Jeffrey knows he's not going to lose his career by talking about the two of them. But they would if they started up. I, I think Tati knows her career cannot handle another controversy. And I think James Charles is kind of like, whatever. You know, like, I, I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And nobody really cares anyway because there's been so many allegations at this point that it's just so saturated and people just don't know what to think, you know. I don't know. I think it's a bad look. I think this birthday cake thing is a really bad look. And I think it's a bad look for James. And I think it's a bad look for his friends. You know, and I'm sorry. I think there's a time and a place to be really loyal to your friends and stand up for them. But I also think that there's a time that you say, okay, you know what? Like I have worked too damn hard for my career and what I have to be supporting somebody that has these allegations around them and has really never done anything to change that. Oh, this is what I was going to say that I keep on forgetting. James came out an Instagram story less than a year ago and he was talking about like, who would I be today? Where would I be? Blah, blah, blah. And he said that, oh, there has to be some soulmate of mine out there. What if they were just in my DMs? And then he came back and started talking. He was like, you know, hit me up in my DMs if you think you're my soulmate or whatever. Then he started talking about how people were hitting up in his DMs and that maybe his soulmate was in there. And I'm like, girl, like you came out and said social media were not dating apps, that you had learned that because you were desperate. Now you're having people reach out to you on Instagram DMs to say that they're your soulmate and you think this is where you meet your next partner baffles the mind and also tells you that up to last year at 23 years old James Charles has learned absolutely nothing from what he has gone through and I am a believer okay that history repeats itself that lessons will be repeated until they are learned and James Charles has learned nothing from this and it will be repeated and the thing is is that there are facts out there and there are receipts out there that certain people have that I'm aware of but I don't have. You know, somebody said to me like, "Oh, you always hint this stuff out in videos that you're going to talk about." And I said in my video like the other day, I don't know where people like selectively hear what certain things in videos, but I said the reason I don't talk about those things is because, A, number one, some people don't care. And number two, I don't have the receipts to back those facts up. If I did, I would get in a video and I would talk about it. But I'm not going to get in a video and talk about something that I have heard by hearsay that people have receipts or that I've seen, but they're not my receipts. But people do have receipts, you know, that could be very damaging to James Charles out there. Um, and, and I think it's interesting that he kind of forgets that. He knows that. He's very fully aware of that. He told me that, you know? So it's like, okay, well, you know that people have factual evidence that could be damaging to your career, and you're posting a picture of a cake that says, uh, and you said it at my birthday dinner, referencing Toddy's video, making fun of that period of time that was career-ruining for you, and also all these huge allegations that were going around, apparently that's all a joke to you and your friends. It's madness to me. Anyway, let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.